Acquiring particle data can be uh, neat and powerful because uh, you can take one particle system and then another particle system and steal the data from the one to the other. Let's go back to our original scene that we were using um, with the bouncing particles on the sphere. Uh, I'm actually going to show a little bit less particles in the viewport so it's more obvious what is happening, let's say 10% or something. Here the uh, particles and uh, I'm not going to use the first n particle, I'm going to use the f every nth by ID. That means I'm tracking the same particles throughout the system by ID and removing all the rest. So now I have 10% displayed and uh, the other 90% are hidden but it's consistent, the same particles. So now let's assume that I have just that many particles and that's not many. Right now it's only 2,000 particles and I want to create another particle system. In this case we'll be, uh, create a box around uh, this particle system. Move it a little bit down and I'll create a PT volume out of it. And I'll try to steal velocities from the original particles and uh, produce pretty much new particles with the same velocities. So I create a PT volume. I'll hide again the uh, uh, box itself. And um, on this uh, PAT uh, volume, I'm going to add a uh, magma modifier on top. And uh, I will say uh, control R. The R will be uh, the velocity channel. I will be stealing the velocity from the nearest particles. So I'll say um, object. And then you see that we have a nearest particle uh, option and we also have a particle sum count, so you can ask for the values from n closest particles. I also have a particle sum radius. That's what I'm going to use. I use a radius of let's say 2 for now. And I'll uh, introduce an input which will give me the particle system that I will be sampling, which will be the PAT loader. And I need to look a point which will be the world space position of each particle in the PAT volume. And then I will need the velocity to be taken from uh, those particles, so I add another output channel here. But this will be the sum of all velocities of the nearest point. I will need to divide it by the total weight in order to produce uh, the average result that I want within that radius. So I say divide, and I divide it by the total weight, and uh, this divide value here will be actually the velocity of my particles. If I go and display this, we don't see the velocities right now, but we have again a special channel similar to the PRT viewport color. We have also a vector and if I output we are getting a very long vector here and the reason is our velocities are currently stored in the reference particle system in units, generic units per second. But we want to see them and the PRT loader is showing them in units per frame. It looks at the frame rate and actually divides that value on the fly. So I also have to divide here and right now I'm running 30 FPS. So I'll divide by 30 and now I suddenly see your blue particles here have similar velocities to the surrounding particles. But since I'm looking in a very small radius, only two, lots of the, the rest of the particles are not finding anything. If I go up to five, I start seeing more particles and I can bump it up and more and more of the PRT volume uh, in a very large range that's looking for the closest velocities of the PAT loader and create actually doesn't create but actually steals the velocities and the rest of the particles are still there but they are invisible because their velocities are zero and we don't draw lines that are zero length. Uh, but they still exist so if I start rendering now all the particles will be loaded but some of them will have velocities and some not. That means it's a good idea to also code those particles, create a selection output and say okay if the magnitude of this velocity or even better if the number of particles that are found within this radius is zero so I can go here and say logic and we say equal to for example and I'll switch this one to an integer uh, so we say if it's the number is particle is zero uh, then we want these particles to be deleted so all I have to do is convert this to float and we add a delete uh, operate on top of the stack and now the particles uh, that will be rendered will be only the particles that have velocities and all the other particles would be completely removed. So this is uh, a neat way to actually uh, increase the number of particles uh, by sampling closest particles with another particle system. 
Uh, another thing that we tend to do is use the Frost object, which is a separate plugin by ThinkBox, to create a mesh around the original PRT, volume, uh, PRT loader and then create a PRT volume out of the Frost and acquire it, the velocities. But that's a slightly different workflow, and we have a, a demo, a tutorial on our website about it. Another thing that we can do with uh, sampling nearest particles that is kind of uh, cool is if I create a box and once again fill it with uh, particles, I'll create a PRT volume out of this box and then I'll uh, create another PRT volume out of this box which is uh, a separate object. I'll hide this one and I'll select the second one. I'll change its color to let's say red and uh, Let's update so we can see it, and I'll change the number of particles, so I have very few particles in the volume. And then we'll have this orange one. It doesn't really matter much what color it is, but I'll make it blue so we see the difference between the two. So I have a few red particles and a lot of blue particles. Now in this blue system, I'll add a magma, and uh, I will be measuring the distance of the blue particles to the closest red particle and creating a gradient based on that. And based on that, again, I'll be outputting a color. So uh, what we need, again, is object. And we look, and there is a nearest particle operator. And this nearest particle operator has the position. And uh, that means that I can connect the output for now here, even though it doesn't make much sense yet. Uh, I will pick the uh, second particle system as the input. I'll use the lookup point in world space again. And this position now uh, tells me, okay, th that's where it is. And uh, I would need to subtract from this position the uh, position of the particle. Keep in mind that this position is in world space, so we need to subtract the world space version of our blue particle position. And now we take the vector magnitude as usual. We divide it by some factor. For example, uh, let's say uh, we'll use 30 for now. I'm not really sure how big this is, but it's relatively large. And then we'll use a function blend, control W, shift control W. Uh, one color will be red and one will be blue. And then we auto-update. And what we get is a gradient where, based on this factor here, we are measuring the distance to the, to the closest particles. Let's go here to, let's say, 10. And now you see that we're visualizing the distance to the closest particle through the color. And it actually looks very much like a cell map. If I go here and disable the jitter position and increase the number of particles, you start seeing those cells, which are pretty much spheres around the red particles, where the blue particles are being painted from when they are exactly the same position, they're completely red, and then they fall out and go into blue when they are too far away. Okay, let's switch this one to 30 or 40 and so on. And you can, of course, apply all the tricks uh, for color blending that we looked at in the beginning and much trick colors or use a whole gradient with a texture output and so on. Of course, you can use a cell map directly from 3ds Max, but uh, this is uh, kind of uh, a nice way to um, visualize distances between two particle systems. And if I change, let's disable again the uh, automatic reduction there. And if I change my uh, reference particle system that we are measuring the distances to, you can see the particles finding the closest particle or not. There is another operator that can do the same. The nearest particle, instead of using the nearest particle, you could use the uh, uh, other operator for uh, particles, which is the particle sum count. And you can look for the one closest particle particle, which is, so you say here, number of neighbors one, and then you would take the max distance, which is exactly what we want. We don't need the, the, the subtraction anymore, and we don't need the magnitude anymore, and it does exactly the same. Now the max distance of the closest particle is actually the distance to that particle, so this is a much shorter expression of exactly the same setup. 